Good afternoon. First of all, uh, let me thank uh, Romania for hosting uh, the foreign ministerial uh, meeting here in Bucharest uh, today and uh, tomorrow. Romania is a committed and a highly valued NATO ally, and we meet uh, when war is, uh, is raging on uh, in uh, Ukraine, a neighbor to Romania, so the foreign ministerial meeting will be a very timely and important meeting. Uh, what we have seen uh, since uh, President Putin's um, brutal invasion of uh, Ukraine is that President Putin is failing in Ukraine. He is responding with more uh, brutality, attacking uh, uh, gas infrastructure, uh, power lines, uh, and trying to deprive the Ukrainians uh, of uh, water, electricity, light, uh, and uh, heating. Uh, therefore, we need to support uh, Ukraine uh, because what we see is that uh, President Putin is trying to uh, use winter as a weapon of war, uh, which is inflicting a lot of uh, suffering uh, on the Ukrainian uh, people. Uh, NATO allies uh, are providing unprecedented support to Ukraine, and they will continue to provide uh, unprecedented support to Ukraine, including by helping them to rebuild their um, gas and uh, power infrastructure. Uh, and, of course, also continue to deliver uh, air defense uh, systems. Um, we will meet with the Foreign Minister uh, of Ukraine, um, uh, Koleba, um, uh, tonight. Uh, we will also meet uh, tomorrow with uh, the Foreign Ministers of uh, our close uh, partners, uh, Georgia, uh, Moldova, and Bosnia and Herzegovina, expressing our uh, support to them. Uh, and then um, uh, we will also address uh, our resilience uh, or our critical infrastructure and the challenges that China is posing to our security, to our values and uh, uh, to uh, our uh, economy. So uh, this will be a very substantive foreign ministerial meeting and once again many thanks to uh, Romania for hosting all of us here uh, it is in this uh, uh, magnificent uh, place. Uh, Secretary General, thanks a lot. You mentioned uh, the fact that Putin is using uh, winter as a weapon of war, but aren't NATO and G7 allies moving too slowly and in too small a scale to help Ukraine rebuild and uh, mend its uh, energy infrastructure that's been damaged by the Russian strikes? NATO allies uh, and NATO has already delivered uh, critical uh, supplies uh, to <coughs> Ukraine to help them mitigate the consequences of the brutal attacks against uh, critical infrastructure, including gas and uh, power infrastructure. Uh, we have delivered uh, generators, we have uh, delivered spare parts, uh, and, uh, and allies are in different ways helping uh, to rebuild <coughs> the destroyed infrastructure. We need, we need to realize that there are enormous uh, 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 effects of, uh, of the attacks. Uh, the Ukrainians are able to shoot down many of the incoming missiles and drone, drones, but not all of them. And therefore, these attacks have caused uh, uh, significant damage. I think we all have seen these uh, uh, pictures uh, taken from satellites where you see Europe in light and then you see Ukraine uh, dark. And that reflects the enormous consequences. So it is a huge task to rebuild all of this. Uh, one of the important uh, reasons why this meeting today is so uh, important and timely is that this provides us with the platform to mobilize further support, to step up even more, and also for Minister Koleba to meet all his uh, colleagues in NATO and then to address those urgent needs. And I'm confident that Minister Koleba will raise also the need for stepping up further when it comes to rebuilding their uh, power infrastructure. Bloomberg. Bloomberg over here. It's okay. Hello. My name is Corina Matlinska, Antena 3 CNN Romania. Uh, how will NATO implement the strategic com concept of the Black Sea? We will take decisions. What decisions? What will mean for Romania? Also, NATO has already made important decisions when it comes to our presence uh, uh, in the eastern part of the alliance, including uh, in Romania and the Black Sea region. Uh, after the uh, invasion of, uh, of Ukraine, we doubled the number of battle groups, uh, including uh, with one here in uh, Romania, led by uh, France. Uh, we have increased our presence on the ground. We have 
uh, more presence in the air. We just conducted a, a big uh, air defense exercise over Romania uh, with Spanish, Turkish, uh, uh, American uh, uh, jets, but also uh, with uh, French uh, jets flying out of uh, the aircraft carrier Charles de Gaulle. Uh, so uh, fundamentally what we are doing is partly to increase our forward presence, partly we are uh, stepping up uh, um, pre-positioned, um, also how much pre-positioned equipment and supplies we have, and then we are increasing the readiness of our forces so they can quickly uh, um, be sent uh, or reinforce our presence, for instance, in the Black Sea region if uh, needed. ICTV Ukraine. Can you, can you uh, please call me? ICTV Ukraine. Please go ahead. We can't hear you now since you've started. Please go ahead. Thank you. Veronika Boyko, ICTV Ukraine. As you know, Russia is massively bombing Ukrainian critical infrastructure, and 97% of Russian bombs hit Ukrainian civil infrastructure. Millions of Ukrainians are now without power, heating, water, and every day of delayed support causes more suffering. So what practical results can Ukrainians expect for this meeting? Uh, maybe more air defense systems or weapons? It is painful to see the destruction that uh, the air and missiles attacks by Russia uh, are causing on Ukrainians, uh, on Ukrainian cities, on uh, critical infrastructure. And that's also the reason why uh, allies have stepped up, but also why I expect that uh, here in Bucharest at uh, the foreign ministerial meeting, the message from all allies will be that we need to do more both uh, to help Ukraine uh, repair uh, the destroyed uh, uh, critical infrastructure, including power and gas uh, 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 grid, but also uh, to, of course, address uh, uh, the attacks itself uh, by providing more air defense systems. This is partly um, providing more air defense uh, weapons uh, uh, systems, but also, of course, to ensuring that those systems that we have already provided, and many of them are actually modern uh, NATO standard um, uh, air defense system, including NASAMs and others, uh, that they uh, are, are functioning, meaning that we need to provide spare parts and we need to provide uh, ammunition. So this is not only about adding more weapons, but also ensuring that the weapons that are already being provided by NATO allies uh, can be used uh, to uh, shoot down incoming uh, Russian uh, missiles and uh, drones. Bloomberg. Secretary General, yesterday you mentioned that we might um, expect more attacks on critical infrastructure in Ukraine. How many more attacks can we expect given that Russia's stockpiles are running low? We can expect more attacks uh, because uh, President Putin is failing. Uh, fundamentally, the fact that they have to give up ground, uh, that uh, Russia has been pushed out of the territories around Kiev, uh, around, uh, in the east, uh, around Kharkiv, and then in the south, uh, uh, that they had to give up uh, uh, Kherson, that's a sign of weakness. That's the sign that Russia is actually failing on the battlefield. In response to that, uh, they uh, are now uh, uh, attacking uh, civilian targets, cities, because they're not able uh, to win uh, uh, territory and to, uh, and to uh, uh, in a way, uh, avoid uh, Ukraine uh, slowly liberating more and more uh, territory. Uh, so, yes, we can expect more attacks. Uh, I think no one can say exactly how many, but, but, but President Putin and Russia has demonstrated a willingness to uh, inflict suffering and to a and to, uh, uh, level of brutality uh, that we haven't seen uh, in uh, Europe uh, uh, since the uh, Second uh, World War. Um, we know that Russia is running low on ammunition. That's also the reason why they have reached out to, for instance, Iran to try to get more. Um, we are uh, saying very clearly that no country should uh, support Russia's illegal war. Uh, and therefore, Iran and no other country should uh, provide uh, uh, Russia with missiles, drones, or anything else uh, that can uh, help them to continue this uh, brutal war of aggression against uh, uh, Ukraine. We'll go to German television here, please. Uh, 2008, uh, NATO declared here in Bucharest um, that someday Ukraine would be a member of NATO. Where stands NATO now, today, on behalf of this uh, declaration? 
You are right that we made decisions uh, on uh, Ukraine, uh, Georgia, on membership here at the NATO summit in 2008. I was here myself as, uh, at that time, a Norwegian Prime Minister, so I remember uh, that me meeting very well. Uh, I, uh, first of all, I welcome that uh, since then we have strengthened significantly our partnership uh, with Georgia and uh, with uh, Ukraine, uh, something that has not least been demonstrated uh, uh, since 2014 when uh, uh, Russia annexed uh, uh, Crimea uh, and since then uh, NATO allies have delivered uh, a lot of support to Ukraine uh, uh, and therefore also the Ukrainian armed forces were much stronger, much better equipped, much better led um, um, and much bigger than they were in 2014 uh, and that's very much because of the support uh, they have received from NATO uh, allies over these years and we were prepared uh, when uh, the invasion happened in February and then uh, allies stepped up further now with unprecedented level of support to Ukraine. Um, um, I expect that uh, foreign ministers uh, will um, at the meeting here in Bucharest uh, today and tomorrow reiterate uh, that uh, NATO store is open um, and we have demonstrated that over the last years by allowing uh, uh, by allowing, uh, North Macedonia, Montenegro to become members and now also Finland and, uh, and, uh, and Sweden. So we have demonstrated that the decision in Bucharest that NATO store is open is something we um, uh, live up to, not only in words but also in deeds by actually allowing more members to, co uh, to come into the alliance. Uh, on Ukrainian membership, uh, we stated that Ukraine uh, will become a member. Uh, I expect uh, allies to reiterate also that position. However, the main focus now is on supporting Ukraine. Uh, we are in the midst of a war and therefore we should do nothing that can undermine the unity of allies uh, to provide uh, military, humanitarian, financial uh, support to Ukraine uh, because we must prevent uh, uh, President Putin from winning, and we need to ensure that Ukraine prevails as a sovereign, independent uh, nation. We'll go to Secretary. Press over here, please. This invasion of Ukraine and now faces critical energy issues, including recent blackouts with Russian strikes in Ukraine. Allies, allies talk about supporting Moldova, but what concrete measures can NATO take and is taken to help the country from further destabilization? Moldova is, um, is a partner of, uh, of uh, NATO. Um, uh, Moldova uh, also receives uh, uh, support from uh, NATO allies individually and from the European uh, Union. Uh, and uh, we see uh, the brutality of this war, uh, not only for Ukrainians, uh, but also for people all around the world, caused by increased food prices. But in Moldova in particular, uh, they have uh, suffered also because of uh, uh, the uh, uh, blackouts uh, of their uh, energy grid, which is a direct consequence of the war uh, going on in, in Ukraine. So this is about uh, stepping up uh, practical support to Ukraine, uh, to, to Moldova, and also sending a very clear message uh, that uh, uh, this war must not escalate beyond uh, uh, Ukraine. Uh, and uh, I had recently a meeting with uh, the Moldovan uh, um, president, and uh, I expressed my solidarity and also <clears throat> the strong message from many NATO allies that they are ready also to provide practical uh, support. Uh, Secretary General uh, Pablo Gutierrez with Feature Story News for CGTN. Um, my question is in relation to your statement about winter becoming a weapon for Russia. Uh, we have already seen a mass exodus of Ukrainians over the last 10 months. Is there a concern that we will see a second, perhaps a greater wave of migration towards Europe? And what is NATO doing uh, to support um, um, the uh, people of the Ukraine in the event of a second wave uh, of Ukrainian migration? We have seen millions of people being forced to flee uh, Ukraine uh, already. Uh, many of them have uh, crossed the border into uh, Romania, close to three uh, million. And that just demonstrates uh, how timely and important it is that we meet here in Romania, border of, uh, of uh, Ukraine. And of course, we have to be prepared for uh, more refugees uh, crossing uh, into the rest of uh, Europe. This is a war. This is a brutal war. And, and, and there is a deliberate attack on critical services. Uh, 
uh, heating, uh, light, uh, water, gas. Uh, and of course, the purpose of that is to inflict as much suffering as possible on Ukrainian civilians to try to break their commitment, their, 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 their uh, unity uh, in uh, standing up against the Russian uh, in, in invasion. I'm absolutely certain that uh, President Putin will not succeed, that the Ukrainian people, the Ukrainian armed forces, the Ukrainian leadership will not bend, but will just mobilize even more uh, in fighting back. And if anything, uh, these brutal attacks against uh, critical civilian infrastructure is only encouraging NATO allies to do even more. Uh, because we need to ensure uh, that uh, Russia doesn't win. Because if President Putin wins uh, this war, the message will be that uh, when uh, authoritarian leaders use brutal force, when they invade another country, when they violate international law, they can achieve their goals. That will be a tragedy for uh, Ukraine, but it will also make the whole world more dangerous and us more vulnerable uh, because the lesson uh, learned uh, uh, for authoritarian leaders is that they can use force. So that, that's the reason why it is in our security interest to continue to support uh, Ukraine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, one, one more Thank question, you. Thank you so much. please. No? Okay.